Hey, you got barbecue and bottles here, and today we're going to be doing Novalox. Novalox is really similar to Gravlox or just plain Lox. The only difference is once we actually cure it in the fridge for 48 hours, we're then going to cold smoke it. So if you're into that kind of thing, hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and stick around for the recipe. So this recipe is really plain and simple. All you're going to need is some brown sugar, some kosher salt, and most importantly, the star of the show is just a really good cut of salmon. And we went to our local fishmonger, got some sashimi grade salmon here. You can see there's incredible marbling in this. And that's where you really want to be investing in this recipe is just making sure you're getting a high grade quality of fish because we're essentially going to be eating this raw. Another great thing about this recipe is just how much cheaper it is to make this at home than going out and buying cold smoked salmon or Nova Lox or Lox itself. And in, in this recipe, we're actually going to show you at what point you could just stop and start slicing this up to create Lox, or you can continue on with the cold smoke and make Nova Lox like we're going to do today. So let's just set this salmon aside and we're just going to make the, the cure. So it's really easy. The cure, all we need is for every two pounds of fish, you're going to want a quarter cup of sugar and a quarter cup of kosher salt. So we have a little more than a four pound side of salmon. That means we're going to use a cup of each. So that's it. Now just mix this up and what you want to do is make sure you're getting any of the clumps of brown sugar out so that this is a nice even mix. So now we're done mixing. We've got it nice and even. So one thing you can do at this stage is add aromatics. You can add in classic ingredients for Nova Lox or Lox like uh, dill, rosemary, thyme, the zest of a lemon. We're just going to keep it nice and simple here and we're going to show you that you know you all you really need for this is two ingredients and about 48 hours of time. So what you want to do is lay out a base layer of saran wrap like this as best you possibly can. And this is where we're going to start to uh, prep a, a surface for the salmon here. What we're going to do is take about half of our mixture and just lay this down on the bottom. And we want to lay this out in a shape that's consistent with the side of salmon that we have because we're going to lay that down on top of here once we're done. Now we're just going to lay the fish down on here, skin side down. Perfect. Now we're just going to use the rest of the cure and sprinkle it evenly over the top. Now that we've got this covered up, and to be clear, I mean covered not just the surface in terms of the top and the bottom, but the sides here as well. Now we're ready to just wrap this up and get it in the fridge for a 48 hour cure. So we're just gonna take the saran wrap and pack this in as tightly as we can. Now if you've got a vacuum sealer, you can use that at this stage. You know, we realize that everybody doesn't have one of those at home, so we just wanted to show you a more simplified recipe here with stuff that you likely have around the kitchen. Now that you've got that wrapped up, we're just going to transfer it to a cookie sheet or a baking tray. Just like that. So it's really important to have your fish sitting on top of a baking tray like this because the salt and the sugar are going to wick out a ton of moisture from this salmon. It's no longer going to feel like it's got that raw texture to it. And all of that liquid is going to be inside of the saran wrap. This isn't perfectly sealed. And so naturally some of it's going to escape out and you want to have a tray so that your fridge doesn't become a mess of fish and salmon juices. So let's transfer this into the fridge. So it's 48 hours later, the salmon's ready to come out of the fridge, so let's go get at it. 
Now one important step that I forgot to mention is you should be putting something heavy on the salmon while it's resting in the fridge and curing away. We just use a couple extra Tupperware containers here and then just put some rub in just to weigh it down and apply a little bit of extra force. And that just helps, helps bring the liquid out of the salmon as it's curing away over the 48 hour cure. You can see there's been a lot of juice that's come out of this salmon while it's been curing in the fridge for 48 hours. And when you touch it, you can really feel some firmness in the fish now. It's no longer just that raw side of salmon that we've got. You can really feel it's starting to have that lox and Novolox touch to it. So I'd recommend you do this over the sink. Just dump out the juice that's actually come out of the fish. Again, this is why you want to use a baking sheet when you're doing your cure to catch all that juice. You don't want that in the bottom of your fridge after two days. Now we're going to give it a good rinse. You want to get all that excess cure off of here. Otherwise, this is just going to be too salty. Get both sides. Get the skin side. Get the flesh side. Perfect. There we go. So now we're just going to transfer this to a drying rack or a cooling rack. Take some paper towel and you're going to want to get all the excess moisture off of this. All right, so at this stage we actually have locks or grav locks and if you want you can just start slicing into your salmon now. Skip ahead to the end of the video if you want to stop here and just we'll show you how to cut this just so that you get those perfect thin wafer thin see-through slices that you get at the grocery store or your deli. Um, anyway, but obviously what we're going to be doing here is Novolox. That's where we actually cold smoke this for 24 hours. So what we're going to want to do before we actually cold smoke it is put this back in the fridge for a half an hour and what's going to happen is there'll be a thin, almost sticky or tacky film that forms on the surface of the salmon called uh, I believe it's a, a pellicle or a pellicle and that when we bring it out to the smoker afterward that's really going to help the smoke flavor stick to the salmon and really impart that smokiness that we're looking for in a Novolox. So we're just going to put this in the fridge and we'll be back in half an hour. All right we've had this in the fridge for a half an hour and you can start to feel that tacky pellicle that's formed on the outside of this salmon. So we're just gonna stick this off to the side and we're using our Traeger 34 Pro for this one. And for this, we're gonna be using this smoking tube. This is a great little thing, whether you're just using a gas grill and you wanna add a little bit of smoke flavor or whether you're doing a cold smoke on your Traeger, this tool is perfect for that. So we're just gonna take some of our regular Traeger hickory pellets here, just load up the tube And we don't need this full, we just need this about halfway full all the way down the tube, just like that. And that's all we need for this smoke. So put our lid down and now let's prep the grill. So to turn your Traeger into a cold smoker, we're just gonna remove this grate here. Then we're just gonna remove the drip tray. Now what we're gonna do, we've got our burns matic torch here. Make sure you turn the gas on. Now we're cooking. There, we just want to get one, one of these ends lit up like that. Perfect. And that's going to ignite and be the source of smoke for the entire chamber here. So we're just gonna put that down on this end. Now we're just gonna put the grill grate back in. Now we just set our salmon in there to rest. Now we're doing this in, the, uh, in, in late spring and the temperatures overnight 
are still going to be cool enough where we can have a fish outside on the smoker and we don't have to worry about the heat getting to it. So we're just going to close the lid down here and let this go overnight. We'll check back in in the morning and you know we'll see if it's imparted the smokiness and that flavor that we're looking for into the salmon. So you'll see we placed the smoker tube on the left hand side of the Traeger and that's going to allow the smoke to come up across the fish make sure we're connecting delivering that flavor profile we're looking for before the smoke then comes out the chimney so you always want to make sure your smoke source is on the far side of your grill relative to the chimney and you're placing your protein in the middle now it's morning time time to check in on the salmon you'll see what we had was a little bungee cord here just wrapped around the leg of the trigger and then the handle on the lid and that was just to keep the raccoons out we've got a lot of wildlife in our backyard where we live and we just want to make sure they didn't get to the salmon overnight all right look at that beautiful color We've got the salmon in off the smoker this morning and we've officially got Nova Lox sitting in front of us. Again, the difference between Lox and Nova Lox is that Nova Lox has actually had a bit of a cold smoke. So we've had a little over a 12 hour cold smoke that you can see here. And the flesh of the salmon's really got that beautiful smoky color. I wish you could smell it in the kitchen here. It smells incredible. We've got that hickory smoke uh, aroma that's just coming off of this. So now the most important part is just carving this up. You need a long knife, a long carving knife or a brisket knife. Now with your honing rod, make sure you wipe your knife clean afterward. You don't want any of those little metal fragments or metal micro dusts getting into your food. Now, for slicing, you're gonna to wanna to start at the tail end first and just keep your knife really, really flat. And you're gonna to wanna to shave in here and try to get slices that are just wafer thin. So the first couple that come off you know, are, aren't gonna work. You've gotta actually get down into the flesh of the fish here before you can start to get the wafer thin slices. So you want to be able to see your knife through the fish as you're slicing and that's how you know you've got the right thickness or thinness. So you'll see here you can get a really nice thin translucent piece of Novalox and what we're doing is we're just laying them down in a glass Tupperware here. So we're, we're going to lay out a thin layer. Then we'll get some parchment paper, lay that over top, put another layer down, and just repeat until we're done slicing up this whole fish. And that way we can throw this in the freezer, it'll freeze perfectly, and we can pull out a layer of parchment paper at a time and let that thaw out, as opposed to having to take the whole thing, the whole thing out of the fridge and have all of it thaw. We're not gonna be able to get through this much Nova Lox in a single go. So if you get a piece like this that has a little bit of the red vein there at the bottom, just take the tip of your carving knife, and get it out like that, and just continue to advance, just like that. Look at that, wafer thin, you can see through it just like a window. Now as you go up the side of the fish, it's gonna be easier to get those larger slices So just look at this. Now all you need is a little bagel, some cream cheese, some red onion, chives, and you are going to be ready to go. So folks, if you like this video, give it a like below. Consider subscribing to the channel and we'll see you on the next one. This folks is how you do Novalox at home.
So why don't you give this a shot? It's one of the few recipes where it's way cheaper to do it yourself at home. And honestly, let's do the taste test and we'll just see how this actually turned out. Mm, that is absolutely incredible. You get a way better outcome when you do this at home than just buying it at the store. Make sure you get a high grade piece of salmon and you're gonna love this recipe. Thanks for tuning in.